Howdy friends. So those of you that like math puzzles or just uh, puzzles in general, I'm going to start asking some regular uh, math puzzles. And these are just going to be recreational math, you know, nothing serious, just maybe a fun little way to engage your brain for a few minutes. Some of the questions will be easier. Some of them will make you think a little bit more and some of them you may just get stuck on. So this will be the very first one. So I hope you enjoy it. So here's our question. So the idea is we're going to take the digits one through five and we're going to place those digits randomly in those circles in that little star diagram. And we're going to ask ourselves, okay, so if we place those digits randomly in that circle, what's the probability that at least two consecutive integers are connected by a line segment? That is the question. So certainly feel free to pause it and work on this. And if you would like to see a solution, well, keep going. So I am going to try to keep my solutions uh, pretty concise. And there may be, you know, I'm not saying this is the only way to do them, but this is certainly the way, uh, at least this is going to be the way that I solved this one. So this is the way that I approached this question. So, okay, the way I approached it was I first started playing with it. And the thing that I found that worked was I started by placing three in any circle. Okay, so I placed three in some circle. There it is down there in a circle. And you may see that little three that's over, that, over there, that little red one. You may wonder why that's there. Well, here's why. So I start by placing three. The idea is, well, we could rotate that diagram so that the three is at the top, right? And right by, by rotating that diagram, it doesn't alter any of the connections. So the idea is we could just twist our diagram so that that three is at the top. And in that case, uh, again, we're still working with the same diagram. So the idea is, well, let's just start off by assuming that our three is at the top. We can begin just by assuming that. So the three is already placed and it's sitting at the top. So we want to know how many total diagrams could we form, right? So how many uh, of these diagrams, remaining diagrams, could we form where we have the three at the top? Well, we could use the multiplication principle. If I look at this circle on the left, well, I would have four numbers remaining for that for that circle. And then if I go to the next circle, I would have three choices for that one, and then two choices for this one, and then one choice remaining for this one. So if my three is at the, at the top, I'm going to have 24. I can use the multiplication principle to say four times three times two times one. I'm going to get 24 total configurations. So now let's think about this. So the idea is we're going to notice that there are only two ways to place the numbers at the bottom so that our condition is not satisfied. So how can I alter this diagram? Or how can I, I shouldn't say alter, how can I proceed to fill it in so that our conditions are not satisfied? Well, I've got, I've got the numbers... I'm playing with the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. I've already put the three in there. If I don't want the condition to be satisfied, I don't want a two or a four to be at the bottom, right? I don't want a two or a four to be at the bottom because then they'll be uh, connected to a three and that satisfies that condition. Well, that tells me that either, I've got to put a one and the five at the bottom. Well, the only way to do that is to put the one in the bottom left and the five in the bottom right or to put the five in the bottom left and the one in the bottom right. And again, this is assuming that our three is here at the top. Okay, but notice if we, you know, if we look at this first diagram, we've got the three at the top and the one at the bottom left and the five at the bottom right. What is that force to happen? Well, if that happens, again, notice now in this circle, I couldn't have a two because if there's a two there, again, it would violate our condition. So that tells me that the four has to go here, and by default, the two has to go here. And notice this condition, or this diagram, uh, wouldn't satisfy that condition that we wanted. And likewise, if we look at the second one, again, if I look at, okay, I've got one here. I don't want the two to go there, so I'll put the four there. And again, I will put the two here. So to me, it looks like, well, it looks like out of our 24 original configurations, there's only two that do not satisfy the condition. And therefore, using the prob the, the, our, our probability formula, the total number of ways that that event can occur 
divided by the total number of uh, events, different events. Well, we said there's 24 total configurations. Of those 24 uh, configurations, we said that two of those were bad, right? That was the number of bad ones that don't satisfy it. So there's 22 good ones. So there's 22 out of 24, which reduces to 11 over 12. And that is the probability of one of those diagrams satisfying that initial given condition.